The photographs you're currently viewing on screen were among the first taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. These, posthumously published in 2009, were part of the telescope's test images. They were not originally included in the formal catalog of the space agency. In them, large black blotches can be observed, disrupting the space background filled with stars, cosmic dust, and galaxies. What's striking is the profound darkness within, as if nothing inhabits it. However, for some elite academic scientists, this could signify one thing, given its peculiar characteristics and the radiation information captured. It was a massive hole in space, a tear in the fabric. This was captured moving at a speed impossible for any structure in the universe. Perhaps something was moving outside the universe itself, with the capability to enter without the slightest hindrance. If the galaxy were teeming with intelligent life, why haven't we made contact yet? Due to the vast number of stars, habitable zones within each system, and the Milky Way itself, it wouldn't even be plausible to consider, through extensive calculations, that at least a couple of civilizations reached an extremely advanced stage of development. And even simpler would be the conjecture if we considered the rest of the galaxies and planetary systems throughout the universe, of which we haven't even been able to establish their real boundaries and dimensions. So, in response to the initial question, a possible solution to this leads us to the theory that addresses this issue by assuming that such advanced civilizations might consider us humans little more than animals on display. An early explanation for the paradox, proposed by John Allen Ball in 1973, is the zoo hypothesis. According to this idea, extraterrestrials may be aware of us but refuse to contact us. But why? If the levels of cognition achieved by the human race have reached such abstract points as imagination itself, metaphysics and mathematical calculations that have no foothold in the physical world. According to John Allen Ball, the only way to understand the apparent lack of interaction between them and us is by positing the hypothesis that they are deliberately avoiding interaction. They may have reserved the area where we live as some kind of national park or a special class or type of zoo where they observe species they consider inferior but sufficiently striking to be exhibited, socially speaking. Consider that we humans have created successful zoos for beasts like leopards, elephants, giraffes, and gorillas, but not for amoebas or protozoa. The latter, at first glance, seem uninteresting to us. Just as we set aside land areas as nature reserves and leave isolated tribes uncontacted, such as the one on North Sentinel Island, of whom it is known they have yet to discover fire and exhibit markedly hostile behavior, something that has marked them negatively, and understandably so. For anyone who has attempted to approach this island has swiftly been hunted down by members of this tribe and not returned alive. Thus, extraterrestrial civilizations would opt, much like the government of India, the country to which this island belongs, to let us evolve on our own and observe our progress. A compelling and interesting case of alien anthropology. In this way, following Ball's hypothesis, and as our civilization matures enough, technologically or ethically, they would establish contact. Less advanced civilizations would be left alone, though monitored, to prevent them from being domesticated or acculturated. This would suggest that there are governing rules in the universe for different civilizations, which would respect this treaty to leave less evolved species intact. The zoo hypothesis predicts that we will never find them on our own because they don't want to be found and have the technological capability to ensure that. 
But Ball also proposes a darker variation of his idea. We are not a zoo, but a laboratory. We could be like a laboratory for extraterrestrials, where it's a requirement to be unaware that we are part of a social experiment to avoid biasing the results. Sometimes they might even take the odd individual to conduct examinations and experiments on their own bodies. This would partly explain the famous abduction accounts, memories of close encounters, as well as the countless sightings of unidentified objects, which could be considered as those monitoring our civilizational process. Just as laboratory rats are artificially created in a certain way, with a life dedicated solely to serving a series of experiments without any consciousness regarding their species, their captive condition, or the existence of a natural world of which they could be a part. However, Ball himself did not like his idea and described it as psychologically unpleasant because it would imply certain behaviors on the part of those civilizations so similar to ours. And this would lead to the classic problem that occurs in all fiction or philosophical approach to the unknown. That they would act according to the same ethical principles as humans, and at the same time, suffer from the same moral evils, such as violence, envy, revenge, politically hostile competitive attitudes, and that, which has been a historical limitation for the human species, where biases have caused terrible wars, religious persecutions, could not be part of the behavioral structure of a civilization that has managed to control another apparently as complex.